Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 10, Episode 2. This is not on Prime Video. You can find some episodes if you Google it on YouTube. Go to YouTube and put in Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 10. Let's get started. So here we are, and... Oh, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. Yeah, took me a second to get with the program there. All right, here we go. So we get to see the artists and the paintings that they submitted in order to be on the program. That looks quite strong. Yeah, interesting. Black and white when it comes to the face, but lots of color ability there. So it'll be interesting to see what he does today. I do enjoy that pose. You know, it gets harder and harder to come up with original ways of portraying yourself in a self-portrait. That looks somewhat mystical and quite interesting. Wow, look at that. Um, interesting concepts. You know, she's holding a bone. There, there's some things that happen, you know, just in symbolism and art that, that just, they just exist. And, and, and bones are one of them. Here's another one. This is a little, a little difficult to see. Um, but that looks like a nice little gem of a painting, I think. Okay, nicely done. Let's see what the next one is that comes up. Yeah. Oh, this, let's see, this is really interesting. Oh yeah, putting uh, uh, those lines in front of the face as if she's looking through uh, Venetian blinds. I've seen that used before. I think it's really clever. It's a good idea. And boy, everybody so far looks quite strong. This, I think this is gonna be a good episode. Boy, you never know though. Remember, they only, they're under time constraints. All right, here's a real academic painter. This is someone who studied uh, in the school of portraiture as we know it from the past. The judges never seem to respond to this type of painting. I think it's fabulous. I would, would have loved to get that kind of training. I don't know that this is where I would have gone with in my art choices once I had that training, but boy, do I admire the heck out of it. Here's the next one. It's a little hard to see. It looks like it's a print of some kind. So, Wow, we'll have to see what she does today. Definitely black and white, so it will be monochromatic. But I don't. It, that's a hard painting re to respond to, especially considering the one that came before. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, I like that. So direct, very strong. That's such a strong painting. And I have to admit, her smile kind of wins me over here. You know, they always say that you buy art from artists that you love. So, you know, personality does have something to do with art sales, you know, or even popularity. <laughs> That's a little bit hard to see. Can't help thinking of A Handmaid's Tale and looking at that. But that might not be the reference at all. I wonder, I'm wondering if she has a disability of some kind, and that's why the crutches. Hard to know. Here's the next one up. Oh, that's a strong piece. That's a very strong piece. I like that kind of portraiture where, you, you know, you just write in on the face. Let's get to the business. <laughs> that's, that's kind of how I like to approach things. But that's personal bias. And I've met, you know, this is a recap and there will be personal biases along the way. Richard Curtis is our first model up. Richard Curtis is well known for his comedy uh, writing probably best known for Love Actually, you know, the movie. And I know him best from um, Vicar of Dibley, which was a series that I just loved back in the early 1990s. Now, four hours in, uh, the artists turn their easels around. It hasn't actually been four hours. It's been two hours on task, an hour for lunch, and then two more hours on task. And Richard is going to pick one of these to go home with him. That has nothing to do with the final judging. Oh, I really love that has color value swap outs, which I really like. I have turquoise on my palette and uh, it's a real challenge to use that color. You know, it's not a color that appears in nature. So in order to make it go or make it work with other colors, you have to be really good at mixing. And this person is really good at mixing. There's a lot of pure hue in that painting. So it's quite vibrant. Look at the blue of the eyes. Wow, really 
That's, that's just beautiful. Wow, see? Yeah, boy, that's beautiful. And there's such a great color value swap out under the eyes. That's what I'm always talking about. See the, the purple under the eye and on the side of the eye? Of course the face didn't have purple on it. And if you were to match it to a photograph, it wouldn't have been purple. But the artist looked and decided it was a warmish tone under there, and she mixed for that. And she mixed a color that would work, that would go, so to speak. So that was... She's a really good colorist and an excellent painter. Uh, um, right now, I, I mean, it's the first painting up, so right now she's the front runner for me. But, but also because I think it's so great. This is very, very different. It's much more static. It's much more um, stiff. And it has a lot of blending in it. This is the kind of painting that uh, I know lots of people love this, and this is, you know, what I call matchy-matchy painting, meaning you're going to match what you see in front of you very accurately to the colors that you mix. But it just doesn't have the pizzazz that a colorist brings when they do those color value swap outs. For me, certainly looks like him, so the task has been done. It leans more on line than it does on the building of forms, whereas the previous one definitely was building on forms, hardly a line to be seen. Oh, it was the academic painter. All right, then, now I know what happened. She ran out of time. This is for her, probably just the blocking in stage. She would have done so much more if she had enough time. And given the kind of style she's been trained for, you need a lot more than four hours. And that's all she had today. So uh, that's what happened there. That's a beautiful drawing and filled up the entire space. We've seen lots of people who do drawing before and... Um, Oftentimes, they're just at a disadvantage. They're not able to finish in terms of composition and, and uh, using the whole space. But this person did. What this suffers from, for me, is just not a great value range. It sure does in that, that part. You know, if you isolate that part, it, it certainly does. But, um, but not when you pull away. And remember, the final commission is a gallery um, commission, which means it's going to be a on a huge, huge wall in a huge, huge space. And I always doubt whether this is going to fulfill what the um, museum's standards are in order to have a, you know, a, a commission on the wall. Now, let's see which one Richard picks. And to me, it was no surprise. He picked the one I would have picked as well. Yay. Yeah, I really like that one. I have no idea how she'll do when it comes to the judging today in, in terms of going on to the next... Um, the semifinals of this season. Emma Freud is the next one up, and Emma Freud is an English broadcaster. I'm not familiar with her, but uh, she certainly looks like it. And they put her in front of some uh, big blocks of color. Oh, and she had her black cat with her. And I know from years and years and years of pet portraits, I don't do them anymore, but boy, black cats are hard. Uh, anyway, four hours in, the artists turned their easels around. So I would have to look at, uh, at uh, Emma's cat as, as a shape and not get distracted by, you know, the fur and the fluffy and all that. This is a really nice job. Yeah, captured the pose of the day. Um, you know for sure that the cat wasn't going to sit there for the two hours and then the lunch break and then two more hours. So this probably came from... Um, from using some sort of iPad or, or iPhone, something, which is fine. You know, sometimes you just have to have to use what you, what you need to use in order to um, accomplish your task, which is to create a portrait. Um, the other thing is, um, the other reason that I think it probably was using um, technical devices is, you know, you're getting into the eyebrows, the eyelashes, those kinds of things, which you're not going to see from, they're nearly 10 feet away, and you're just not going to see that. But this is, this is really nicely done. Yeah. Ha! Huh, look at the intensity on the cat's face. Yeah. Sometimes I think I prefer animals to people, but, um, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> people usually want a portrait of their pet, but they usually don't want a portrait of themselves with their pet. So, um, oh, this is... So I pulled back because I wanted you to be able to see the size of the painting. Uh because if you don't see the whole context, you don't have a sense of the size. This is a much more direct, you know, coming right in and zeroing in on her um, face. It's very accurate, really beautifully done, beautiful color, um, kind of a wry expression on her face. So that's a capture, you know. I think that's 
Now, you see how if you close your eyes, you're just not going to see many lines. This person built forms, and so your brain thinks that it's seeing lines, but, but you're not. There are almost no lines in this, in this painting at all. It's just forms built from small masses that were joined together with um, color bridges, which is uh, kind of the definition of what painting is. Really, really nice. Yeah, I, I, I'm a fan of this kind of painting, but uh, will the judges? I, you know, I never know. Hashtag Joe was always wrong. Here's our last contestant of the day. Again, this is coming in very direct and, and not getting involved in the cat and the chair and, and all of that, which in a lot of ways is really necessary because you only have four hours. And if you think for a second about four hours, it sounds like a long time, but we've all binge watched two episodes of something and, uh, you know, then you take a lunch break and binge episode uh, two more things and, and your time is up. It's going to go really fast. And remember, they're interviewed during this time. They've got television cameras and lights on them. And they also have a crowd behind them. So it's, a, it's not an environment that where you could just kind of really relax. I'm sure it's like a training, uh, you know, like a sports event. you got to train for this and, and get right to it. Um, I know which one I prefer, but let's see which one Emma chooses. Um, yeah, which is an honor. I mean, it's definitely an honor to be chosen. There we go. Yeah, especially an honor because, you know, if you're doing portrait work, it means that you're probably going to be doing commission work. And the most important thing is that the client is happy. Now, our last model is Fleur East. And Fleur East is a singer. So, I'm, again, I'm not familiar with her, but that's, it doesn't matter. Oh, wow, what a beautiful woman. Ooh, wow, love the color of the suit that she picked, and what a vibrant color behind her. And it's going to be fun to get involved in all that hair and the, and the gold of the uh, earrings. So there's a lot to work with there. Uh, the artists turn their easels around, and Emma, Emma gets her, um, I mean, Fleur gets her first look. And let's see what she thinks. Well, let's see what we think first. All right, here it is. It was really hard to get a screenshot of this. Remember, as I said, I'm getting this from YouTube. And YouTube is, um, I don't know where their source for the, um, for the episode is. But it isn't as well photographed as, as we are accustomed to seeing on Prime Video. This is very uh, black, white. oh, so he must be the guy that did that black and white portrait of himself and then added color to it. That would be consistent with his style. Otherwise, um, it strikes me as being a little strange, in but, um, but I just have to readjust my thinking in terms of, you know, black and white and say, okay, that's just a style and what he chooses to do. So that's, that's nicely done. Here's the next one up. Um, okay, ooh. I'm a little underwhelmed with this one, but I'm, I'm not sure why. Some of it is the composition. I'm just, um, I'm not getting a sense of her being there. Oh, close up I can. There we go. Oh, I see what happened. So it's it's probably a small piece that she, that that they made into a larger piece with the space around the figure, but it, it works so much better as a cropped image. See right there. I think that's beautiful. Let's see. We're going to see from far away exactly what it was. Oh, it wasn't as small as I thought it was going to be. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, um, and here's our last contestant. Oh boy, I just love the heck out of this. I, I just, I just do. I like to see brush strokes. Oh, the warm tones of the skin and then the coolness of the violet underneath. This person's really playing with complementary colors, right? You got a lot of yellows going on, but she's got a lot of purple going on as well. Oh, she's the, my, the one I fell in love with because of her smile. Um, yeah, I really enjoy her painting too. There's something, there's something kind of joyful about her painting as well. Also extremely soft, you know, so when something's painted with kitten paws or, or feathers, I'm all in. I love that soft, soft look. So let's see which one Fleur picks. Um, I think she should pick that last one, but, uh, I'm usually wrong, so let's see what she does. Oh, she does. And look how thrilled the artist is. Well, that's great. I'm so happy for her. Well done. And now we go on to the final judging. Now, in the final judging, 
The judges line everybody up after an incredibly long day and they've had to travel to London, they haven't stayed in their beds. It's been an exhausting day. By this time, uh, I'm sure it's quite late in the day because I don't know how long their judging takes. But they're going to pick three people to go forward in this episode, but only one will go forward into what they call the semifinals of the season, and this is season 10. They're currently filming, I think, or just finished filming season 11. All right, here's the first one, the one of Richard Curtis. I absolutely agree. Really, really love this painting. So I'm all in. Let's see what the second one is. Second one, yes. Okay, I agree. Totally agree. And there's going to be one more. Let's see what the last one is. I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, oh, oh, okay. I'm surprised. All right. Well, but also not surprised. I, I like this painting. I like all three. I think that, wow, now that I think of it, this was a very strong episode. Ah, oh, great way to start the season, too. Oh, so now we have the paintings that they did on the left are the portraits to get them onto the program, and then what they did today is on the right. So we get to see consistency of style and what they could do when they had more time if they are awarded the commission. So that's our first artist, and I really, I hope, oh, I want... I want at least two of these to go forward, but of course only one will. Here's our second artist. Yeah, I think she's accustomed to painting very, very small. And that's, I love small paintings, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, but I do like our other two contestants better. Hmm. I don't have a lot to say about this one, except I do like the design elements of the one she did today. I. That had to be carefully considered, because it could have been a compositional mess, and it's not. And let's look at our last painter. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, I love, uh, wow, I love her work too. All right, so there are two people I would like to see go forward. I don't know what the judges are going to do, and of course we will find out. And no matter what, everybody's a winner because everyone is a great artist and they probably have really flourishing careers. Well, now we're gonna take one more parting shot when we get to see the paintings, both um, the ones that they submitted for their self-portrait as well as what they did today. And it's all very impressive work. So how lucky, how lucky are we to see this? I feel very lucky. And the winner is, dun 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 dun, dun. Well, I'm not disappointed. It's it's a good thing. Yeah, our winner is the gal with the smile. I really liked her painting, although I really liked the painting on the far right, too. And, you know, that's one of the problems with this program is that you're always going to be heartbroken. It's just built in. But everybody wins. Everyone's a success. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mask for value, mix for color. Uh, please join my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.